Now I want to talk about the principles of taxation. Talk about the principles of taxation. When we talk about principles of taxation, we're talking about the qualities a good tax must possess. That is what the principles are about. So when we are preparing taxes, when we're talking about taxes, they must they must have certain items that makes them what a good tax. So how are we going to be able to do this? That means we have to follow certain principles to be able to make a good tax. So economists have identified the number of qualities that a good tax should possess. This includes one. Equity. When you talk about equity, so when you talk about equity, yeah, it's, uh, this means fairness in the sense that the amount of tax people and firms have to pay should be based on their ability to pay. Each person has a greater ability to pay tax than a poor person. So we're talking about equity here. So a good tax must, must possess equity, which means you have the taxes available should be what is affordable by people and firms. So don't give firms what they cannot pay in tax. Don't give people what they cannot pay in tax. So taxes should be based taxes should be based on people's affordability. Do you get it? Yes. So that's the point they are making. So rich people have that financial capability to pay more taxes, higher taxes than poor people. So don't charge them the same way. They should be equity. I think that is clear. Yes. Two, certainty. A tax should be easy to understand and households and firms should be able to calculate the amount of tax required to be paid by them. So it should be certain. We should be able to analyze what we pay in tax. It should be known to us. So in as much as I am paying tax, I should be able to know the amount of tax I'm paying and what brings about that figure. Do you get what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. So individuals, governments, firms, households, they need to know what comes up together that's accumulated to that amount of tax they are paying. That is certainty. Is it clear? Yes. The third point, a convenience. A tax should be easy to pay. It should be easy. It shouldn't be a burden to people. The fourth one, economy. The cost of collecting a tax should be considerably less than the revenue it generates. So taxes should not be put in that shoulder of taxpayers. So what we have to pay in tax should be uh, should be um, should be should sum up to to help the economy, not me paying more, you paying less, because we have to build the economy. So whatever government is charging, whatever tax government have to to levy on us, it was just be little, little, little to bring up. That's huge amount we need. Do you get the point here? Yes. They said the cost of collecting a tax should be considerably less than the revenue it generates. So whatever government have to spend to make tax, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't even sum to become higher than what it's going to bring about. So don't spend 10,000 to get 7,000. Uh, do you get it now? Yes, yes, yes. You must not your expenses on taxes because your in your expense your expenses on tax collection should not be more than the taxes that it's going to generate. More than the revenue it's going to generate. So yes. is it clear? Yes. Flexibility. It should be possible to change the tax if economic activity changes or government aims change. The revenue from some taxes, the revenue from some taxes changes automatically to offset economic booms and stumps. For example, tax revenue rises from income tax and sales tax without any change in the rates. When there's an economic boom, this is because more people will, will be employed, incomes will rise and people will spend more. Such a rise in tax revenue may slow down the, the rise of aggregate demand and prevent in inflationary pressure building up. So taxes should be flexible. A good tax must be flexible. Flexible in terms of how the economy is, what our economy is changing. So government should be able to understand that when they are when they are imposing tax, it should reflect on changes in the economy. It should not become a pressure for consumers. So don't say because okay, just for example, okay, there's economic boom. Economic boom means people are employed. It means aggregate demand should increase. Yes or no? Yes. But as a result of that, government starts increasing taxes. That would not increase aggregate demand. There will be inflationary pressure. Pressure. On people. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yes. Because our, our income has increased, just increased now. Government is charging increasing taxes too. It means it's changing nothing in the economy. Mm -hmm. 
So government should be flexible enough to understand when and how to impose tax. Efficiency. A tax should improve the performance of markets, or at least not significantly reduce the efficiency of markets. For example, an extra one-off tax, sometimes called a windfall tax, imposed on high sub subnormal profits of banks may encourage banks to, to reduce the charges they impose on customers. A tax on pollution may result in a cleaner environment. Income tax rates should not be set so high that they discourage efforts. Efficiency here. When they are talking about efficiency, what they are trying to say is that taxes should improve the performance of the markets. So taxes should not become something that discourages the market, discourages firms, discourages producers. Taxes should not be seen like that. So what will government do about taxes? Ta government could give, or, give a windfall tax, reduce taxes, tax holiday. So this will encourage firms to continue to produce and they might even charge lesser. Do you get the point about efficiency? Yes. So taxes should be that will, that will encourage cost of firms, businesses to increase their output and efficiency. Any question about that? No. Yeah. Right, moving. So go to the impact, the impact of tax. <clears throat> tax base and tax burden. A tax base is the source of tax revenue. This is what is taxed. So the basis of tax, what are the basis of this tax? This is, the, what are the sources of this tax? So what is being charged? Oh, it is 10,000, oh, it is 5,000. What are the sources of this? What brings about this 5,000? That is what we call the tax base. Do you get it? Do you get what I mean? No. When we talk about tax base, we're talking about the source of the tax. You have to pay tax, yes. Yes. Why do you have to pay this tax? Where does this regulation come from? Mm. Government has made rules that or regulations that would warrant us to pay tax. So mm. what we pay in tax is from the source, which is the tax base. So what is being taxed is our tax base. Yes. Do you get it? Yes, no, yes. A white tax base means that a large range of items and people are taxed. There can be a link between tax rates and tax body. A white tax base, a white tax base may enable tax rates to be relatively low. High tax rates, particularly corporate tax rates, can reduce the tax base. This is because they may cause firms to move out of their country. So if the tax rate, if the tax base is wide, it reduces the tax we pay. But if it is high, tax rate will be high. Do you get what we're saying there? A wide tax rate base means that a lot the taxes are being shared among a lot of people. Yes. That's a wide tax base. And that would reduce the amount each person, each taxpayer pays. Yes. Do you understand what a wide tax base means? Yes. It means that taxes are, are shared, cut across large numbers of people. And that would definitely reduce the prestige. The tax body. Yes, the prestige, right? Yeah. yeah. So it will reduce the tax body. If not, a high tax rate will, will reduce the tax base, which means a lot of businesses would leave your country. I think you get the difference between high tax rates and wide, uh, high tax base and wide tax base. Mm -hmm. A wide tax base means that a lot of people, are, the tax body, is shared among a lot of people. But a high one means the tax rate is high. Yes, yes. So this will mean that a lot of businesses might be discouraged to pay. They will leave. So that means the tax body relates to what? The amount. So when we talk about that tax base, we talked yes. about it. Then we have tax body. Tax body is the amount of money you pay as tax, as a taxpayer. Do you get tax burden here? Yes, yes. So they said the tax burden relates to the amount of tax paid by people and firms. It is sometimes expressed as the percentage of the country's total income, the GDP. The higher the tax burden, the greater the percentage of people's and firms' income tax taken through tax. If the tax burden is high, that means a lot of people are paying 
high percentage of their income as tax. Or a lot of firms are paying high percentage of their corporate tax. Yes. Do you understand the difference between tax base, tax base and tax body? Yes. Tax base talks about the amount taxed, the source of the tax, how it's been taxed. Tax rate is the, tax body is the amount you pay in terms of tax. So tax rate will affect tax body. If the ta tax base, tax base will affect tax body. If the tax base is high, tax body will be high. If the tax base is wide, tax body will be less. And that's the tax rate. I think it's clear. Yes. So we go to impact of taxation. The incidence of taxation refers to the distribution of the burden of an indirect tax shared between consumers and producers. So if the burden of indirect tax is being shared between producers and consumers, we call it the incidence of tax. Do you get incidence of taxation here? Yeah. Inc incidence of taxation means how taxes have been distributed, tax burden has been distributed between consumers and producers. Clear, right? Yes. This is because the producers can pass on a high proportion of tax in the form of a higher price as they know it will not reduce the demand significantly. In contrast, if, pro if products have, okay, sorry, I missed the step. In the case of products with inelastic demand, consumers bear most of the tax. We are talking about the impact of taxation here. So, for incidence of tax, incidence of tax, incidence of tax means the tax burden is shared between consumers and producers, right? Done. So if tax burden has to be shared between producers and consumers, that means we need to talk about price of a product. So this means us to talk about the demand for a product. If the demand for a product is elast elastic, what happens to tax burden? If the demand of a product, the demand for a product is inelastic, what happens to the incidence of tax? If the price of a, if the demand for a product is price inelastic, it means that producers will be able to shift their tax burden to those to the consumers. Because whatever price they sell, consumers will buy because the demand for such product is what price inelastic. That is for inelastic demand. Mm -hmm. But if the product is price elastic, what happens? They say if products have elastic demand. It is producers who bear most of the tax. So because the product has an elastic demand, the demand for the product is elastic. Firms cannot put the tax incidence to consumers. They have to bear most of the tax body. Because if they increase the price, nobody is going to buy. Why? Because the demand for the product is quite elastic. Do we get it, please? Yes. So this is because they know that they cannot pass on much of the tax to consumers to consumers. As such, a move would bring down the sales significantly, which I just explained. So these are the said figures 26.1 shows the contrasting impacts on tax on a product that is elastic and inelastic. Look at the product that is inelastic. Mm. A it, because the tax body can be shifted to consumers, it does not affect, it does not affect them. It is inelastic. Yes, demand is in because this is inelastic. Mm -hmm. So they could sell at P1. Nothing is going to happen. Yes. There's not going to be significant change in the quantity demand. But if the tax, if the demand for the product is priced elastic, it will reflect in the quantity sold. Yes. Do we get it? Yes, yes, yes. So yes, sir, in both A and B, the tax shift the supply curve to the left by the amount of the tax. The total revenue is P, P1, TX1. The proportion of tax borne by consumer is represented by the change in price multiplied by the quantity sold. That is PP1 to TA. So look at the second graph. Because it is elastic, the tax body will be based on the suppliers. The suppliers will pay more at, will pay more at TA. AX will be what? Because AX. Yes, AX. AX will be what suppliers will pay. TA is what consumers will pay. So the highest burden of tax pays, is paid by the producers. Do we get it, please? Yes, in elastic. In elastic. For inelastic. No, for inelastic, 
Consistent, consistent to pay more. Yeah. At TA. I'm talking about elastic. And in elastic is easy. I'm talking about elastic. Elastic, yeah. Elastic, consistent to pay at AX. Mm -hmm. Consumer to pay at TA. In in elastic, consumer to pay at AX. Consumer to pay uh, consumer to pay at TA. Consumer to pay at AX because they know that they can shift the uh, they can shift the body to to consumers. Yes, yes, yes. Is it clear? Yes. So we go to the impact of direct taxes. Are you there? Yes. There's risk. There's a risk that direct taxes, if set too high, may discourage efforts, enterprise, and savings. If direct taxes, we know direct taxes are taxes charged on income, taxes charged on evidence, taxes charged on profit. Yes. These taxes, if they are high, it will discourage people to work. If I have to pay much tax, then why am I working? Yes. If I have to pay, if firms have to pay high profit tax, what they, they will have, they will be demotivated, they will be demotivated to produce more. Mm -hmm. Did you get it? Yes. So high rate of income tax may stop people, which I explained already. On the other hand, high tax rate may encourage some people to work harder. This is particularly likely to be the case with workers who have fixed financial commitments, such as mortgage, mortgage. The only thing, the only reason why people would work hard when I, the tax rate is high is because they have some financial commitments, what they have to pay for. So they don't have any other choice than to pay. As a result, they work harder to be able to meet up with those financial commitments. That is the point there. Aside that, people will be discouraged. Is it clear? Yes. So the impact of the high taxes on income and from saving is also important. So as they reduce the return from saving, they may cause some people to save less, but they may encourage target savers to save more. If taxes paid on savings is high, people will be discouraged to save. Except if it is important for you to save. That is the point. So the high taxes have the benefit of being able to redistribute income and wealth which act as automatic stabilizers and as a good source of tax revenue in countries with organized labor market, high literacy rates and high income. So what they are saying is this, high tax rate, if there's high tax rate, it's good, but you have to think about how, how to, the procedure of imposing such tax. Mm -hmm. So you can impose high tax rates, high tax, when you know that large proportion of people are so rich so that you can redistribute the income. Not when you know that a lot of people are poor and you're imposing tax. That's the point there. Is it clear? Yes. So the impact of indirect taxes. Why is direct taxes tend to be, to be progressive? Indirect taxes, taxes are aggressive and therefore proportionally, proportionately fall more heavily on the poor. Increasingly, Increasing indirect taxes will also raise prices. This is because this increases, this increase will stimulate workers to press for wage increase, wage increases and set off a trend of rising prices. That is inflation. Indirect taxes, it's a problem, especially for we that are poor. Because if I bought goods worth of $10, okay, let me assume that I bought food. I bought certain cereal yeah. for maybe five dollars. I have to pay tax on it, maybe a tax of one dollar. That means I'm buying six. I'm buying this six dollars. What? Right? Yes. That is the same amount you buy your cereal, and you are rich. So, indirect taxes is always regressing because both the rich and the poor are paying almost the same amount. Mm -hmm. That is regressive. It's not progressive. That is what they are saying here. As a result, it becomes a problem. A lot of workers would demand for high wages. When they demand for high wages, firms, if firms have to do that, it increases their cost of production. Firms will also shift it to consumer. Inflation. Yes. Do you get it? Yes. In the, that is the problem about indirect taxes, but it has its own benefits too. Indirect taxes do have, however, have a number of benefits. 
they are relatively easy and cheap to collect as firms do some of the work. It is believed that they, are, they act as less of a disincentive to effort and enterprise than direct taxes. Mm -hmm. The first point there is that indirect taxes are cheap. They are just few amounts of money. So you, won't even, you might not even know that taxes are being charged on what you bought. Yes. The second point is that it does not demotivate firms. It does not demotivate producers. Do you understand? Yes. It, could, it, could, it will even make workers to want to work more so that they can, they can afford it. So that's the benefit there. They can be used, sorry, they can be used selectively to achieve particular aims, such as reducing the consumption of alcohol. They tend to be harder to evade than direct taxes and easier to adjust. Another benefit is that it can it can reduce the, the consumption of so uh okay. Let me see. Such a... Yeah, they said they can be used selectively to achieve particular aims, such as reducing consumption of alcohol. Yeah, we talked about that. So, for demerit goods. Yes. So, indirect taxes can also help to reduce the consumption of demerit goods like alcohol because it's charged on consumption. So, to a certain extent, people also have more choice within direct taxes. The amount of tax paid by them depends on what they buy. So, because it's indirect tax, it is you'll be charged only when you buy. So that means you could choose not to buy. So you have choices to buy, you have choices to make. So it's not like it's compulsory to pay or like direct taxes. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Yes, yes. So that's the mm -hmm. point there. So indirect taxes, mm -hmm. so indirect taxes are also a useful source of income, especially in countries where it is difficult to raise much from income tax because a significant number of workers will work in the informal economy. Also, in countries with low literacy, people might face problems while filling in the tax forms. So in countries that income is relatively low, so it is better to use income uh, indirect taxes. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yes. Countries that the income is relatively low, indirect taxes could be better. Or countries that have high literacy rates, High illiteracy rates. Mm -hmm. People will find it difficult to fill forms and this thing. But all this work will be done by the business if you have to pay indirect taxes. Is it clear? Yes. Any question about that? No. So changes in taxes. In recent decades, a number of countries, governments in in a number of countries, governments have become in a, sorry, in recent dec decades, in a number of countries, governments have become more reliant on indirect taxes and less on direct taxes. So they're saying that government relies more on indirect taxes than direct taxes. Why is it so? It gets to know. Even more recently, some countries have been adopting what are called flat taxes. A pure flat tax rate, a, a pure flat rate tax system would involve income tax, corporation tax, and VAT. This set at the same rate with no exceptions. Several Eastern Europe, so what they're trying to say is that both income tax, corporate tax, value-added tax, that's both direct and indirect taxes are set at the same rate. So no exceptions. That will, that's what we call flat rates, ta flat, flat tax rates. The amount, ta ta um, the amount charged on income is the amount charged, the percentage on income is the same as the percentage on profit is the same as the percentage on VAT. Yes. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. So if it is 13%, that means 13% on your income. If you set 13% on profit, 13% on indirect taxes. So a number of advantages are claimed to, for flat taxes. They are simple to administer for government and firms. There's less incentive to evade paying tax and more incentive for workers and entrepreneurs to earn and produce more. So for a flat tax rate, the advantage is that you won't evade it. You cannot hide away from it. Is either you pay it through VAT, which is consumption, or you pay it through what you earn, or you pay it through what you make. So you cannot evade tax. Do you get it? Yes. And also it could become an incentive for workers and entrepreneurs to do more. Do you get it? However, 
Concerns have been expressed about the regressive nature of flat taxes. Although in practice, all existing flat taxes have set the uniform rate above a tax-free level of income. The problem about the, problem, the criticism about flat tax rates is that they believe it is regressive. If we all have to pay 15% on what we make, yes. if I make 1,000, I have to pay 15% of it. And you are making 10,000, you have to pay 15% of it. So I'm paying more than what you are paying in terms of tax. That is the regressive nature of tax. Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Any questions about that? No. So go to fiscal policy and the budgets. Fiscal policy refers to decisions on government spending and taxation taken to influence total aggregate demand, total demand in the economy, which is aggregate demand. It has a direct effect on the budget balance. To calculate the government budget balance, as indicated above, above government spending is deducted from its revenue. So the size of any budget deficit or budget surplus can be expressed in absolute amounts. For example, 10 billion as a percentage of GDP. So fiscal policy is, already, we already know what fiscal policy is, the use of taxes and government spending. To correct aggregate, to control aggregate demand in the economy. Yes. So that means we are talking about expenditures and income. That is the point there. So if government spending equals government expenditure, they said if government spending equals government revenue and the government increases its, its spending on, or cuts taxes, it will cause a budget deficit in the short run. If government expenditure is equal to government revenue, that means we call it balanced budget. If that happens, government must not cut tax. If government do, there will be there will be budget deficits. Do you get it or not? Yes. So. <clears throat> Similarly, cutting corporate tax may attract firms from overseas to settle in the country and for domestic firms to expand and so increase their revenue from corporation tax. Look at it. If there's a balanced budget, which means government spending equals to government revenue, government must not cut tax. Because if government cuts taxes, it means government revenue would fall. Expenditure would exceed government revenue. That is a, that's a deficit budget. At the same time, government can also cut taxes to encourage new firms, especially corporate tax, to encourage new firms to set up, multinationals to come into the country, mm -hmm. to encourage local firms to expand. Because when go if government cuts corporate tax, that means taxes on profit will be less. That means firms can use, firms can invest that left um, that amount that is left into expanding their product, expanding their production scale. Mm -hmm. This will increase output in the economy. So, but in the short run, you have to put it in mind that in the short run, there will be sub, there will be deficit budgets. In the long run, if as a result of cutting tax, firms are investing more, aggregate demand increases, output will increase, export will increase, then there could be a surplus or an equal, or, or there could be a balanced budget or even surplus budget. But in the short run, it will be deficit budget. In the long run, it could be balanced or surplus. Yeah. I think it's clear. Yes. Any yes. questions about that? No. I think we stop here. Let's yeah. see. No, let, let me see if it's not much. Not, it's not that much. Let's see. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. It's yeah. not much. It's not much. We can. Yes. It's not much. So, so now we go to the effect of fiscal. It's not much. Yeah. Yeah, it's only one. So we have the effect of fiscal policy on government and macroeconomic aims. We already know what fiscal policy is, the use of taxes and subsidy, right? Yes. So if your government wants to raise aggregate demand in order to increase economic growth and employment, it will have to increase its expenditure and cut taxes by lowering rates, reducing item tax, or raising tax threshold. Government can use fiscal policy to, to Government can use fiscal policy to carry out or to achieve, sorry, yes. Government can use fiscal policy to achieve their macroeconomic aim, such as employment and economic growth. Yes. So if government wants to use fiscal policy, that means government wants to use taxes mm. to achieve economic growth or employment. Government would have to spend more in terms of subsidy 
because subsidy will help firms to reduce their cost of production. And if the cost of production of firms reduces, they would want to increase their output. As a result, they would want to, they might need more workers. Yeah. Unemployment will increase, aggregate demand will increase. Lower unemployment in the lower in unemployment will decrease. Unemployment will, yeah, unemployment will reduce. The lower unemployment. Aggregate demand will increase. Yeah. So government has used fiscal policy to achieve two set of objectives. Reduction in tax tax costs would reduce income tax, meaning that disposable income would rise. Tax costs would reduce corporate tax, meaning profits made by firms will increase. These two things, aggregate demand will increase, output will increase, yes. unemployment will increase, or uh, employment rate will increase, yes. or unemployment will fall. Yes. Is it clear? Yes. So, to do this, we call it expansionary fiscal policy. So if government, listen please, if government wants to use, if government is using, if government is increasing, if government is using fiscal policy by cutting taxes to, to reduce or to increase aggregate demand, we call it expansionary fiscal policy. Expansionary. So expansionary fiscal policy is the use of tax, uh, lower, low tax, or increasing expendi increasing spending to, in to increase aggregate demand. Do you get what I'm saying? Here? Yes, yes. There's fiscal policy. There's fiscal policy, which is taxation and spending. Mm -hmm. So if government wants to increase economic activity, that's if government wants to achieve economic growth, government might need to in increase spending, which is subsidy. Government might need to subsidize for firms. With subsidy for firms, cost of production for firms will reduce. They'll be able to produce more. Government can reduce taxes. A cut in tax, a cut in income tax would, would increase disposable income, meaning that the demand in the economy would increase. Aggregate demand will increase. So because aggregate demand has increased, firms would have would need to respond to this, to this increase in aggregate demand. That means they have to employ more workers to meet up with the demand of customers, of, of consumers. Mm -hmm. So a tax cost, spending on subsidy will lead, uh, and a tax cost, increase in government spending will, be, will lead to what we call expansionary fiscal policy, which means aggregate demand will increase in the economy. That's what they are saying. Yes. So we'll go down, please. So that's, yeah, aggregate demand is consumption plus income, Plus investment, consumption plus investment plus government spending, plus export minus imports. Yeah. And export minus import is what? Export minus import is uh, yeah, it's um, uh, that's uh, that's what we call uh, uh, what do we call it? We call it uh, export. Um, that's our value of export. We call it uh. Yes. Is it trade exports? No, it's not trade exports. We call it uh, difference in export. It's different in export, though. Yes, yes, yes. So that's the difference between our export and imports. Yes. So what we're saying here is this. For aggregate demand to increase, consumption will increase, investment will increase, government spending will increase. Government spending will not get... Government paid. spending will increase. For, for expansion of fiscal policy, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. Do you get it? But for contractionary fiscal policy, for contractionary fiscal policy, it means government is increasing taxes, mm -hmm. government is reducing spending. It's the opposite. Yeah. Opposite, yes. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. Any question about that? No. So we have the questions. What is meant by aggressive tax? Uh, uh, I see, a tax that faces a greater bond and... Burden on the poor and the rich, yes. oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, see. Question two A government wants to redistribute income from the rich to the poor. Which changes in taxation would help to achieve this? Distribution from the rich to the poor? Yeah. Uh, it's not A or B. What is it not A? Is that What's the answer? <laughs> the government wants to redistribute income from the rich to the poor. 
which changes in taxation would help to achieve this objective? C. No, it is B. It's B. A cut in the indirect tax because indirect tax takes much body from consumers. Yes or no? We talked about it. But is an indirect but, tax. Yeah, value added tax is an example yeah. of indirect tax. Yes, yes. So a, a cut in indirect tax would help consumption and increase in income tax because when we talk about income tax, we're talking about those that are earning more. Mm. So government would increase income tax and reduce indirect tax like that. Yes. So the answer is B. Question three. In which circumstances, in which circumstance would the greatest amount of tax of the tax be borne by the consumer? Mm -hmm. When would consumers pay more tax? Consumers pay more tax. But consumers. It's yeah. between B and C, so yeah, B try and to B. think. Because it's an elastic. Yeah. B. P D is inelastic and PES is inelastic. Yeah, B. Why did you choose B? Because uh PS PS, so the businesses because the supply the supply will be more like it's inelastic. If so the set supply is inelastic, so do you know what it means? It means supply. that a change in price does not have any significant effect in the quantity supplied. Yes. That is do you get what I'm saying? A change an increase in price. Does not have any significant, does not reflect in the quantity supply. That is inelastic. So yes. if, if supply is inelastic, mm -hmm. it means whatever price, if whatever, whatever high price it is, firms will still not be able to make up. They can't produce more. Yes. So to see, price PES must be elastic. Yeah. That means whenever they need more, they should be able to produce more. If they cannot produce more, that means it's, the PES is quite el is elastic. It's inelastic. So PED must be inelastic and PES must be elastic. If PES is elastic, that is when firms will be able to produce more as a result of an increase in price. Yes, so the answer is C. <clears throat> Question four. The following diagram shows the effect of introducing a tax. What is now the producer's revenue? If tax is introduced. Produces revenue. Yeah. When tax is imposed. Oh. They've introduced tax. Yes, it's enough. Okay. So which level will producer pay in terms of their revenue? Producers. Yeah. O P A Q. O P what? O P A Q one. O it's B. A tax that is with O is zero, right? Yeah, it's zero. Yeah, I know. Why is it is it O P A Q one? At Q one. <clears throat> yes, it's Q one anyway. It's Q one. Yes, O P Q one. Mm. No. No. OPT Q1. It is OP1. What? It's OP1 TQ1. If tax, listen, if tax increases, yes. Prices will increase from P to P1. Yes or no? Yes, yes. The quantity supply in the market would fall because demand will fall. Yes, yes or no? Yes. So this, the revenue of firms will be at OP1, Q1. T, Q1. Yeah. So C. Is it clear? Yes. Supply will fall back to S1, from S to S1, because uh, demand would be less. So the answer is C. Is it clear? So that ends fiscal policy. <laughs>